Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of Knowing ServiceNow. My name is Neil Laufenberg and for this episode I want to start delving into the realm of configuration management. Um, it's actually quite a large topic so I'll probably put together a series of videos around configuration management but I want to give uh, all of you a feel for the basics of configuration management and how it's used throughout the system. Um, so some basic navigation things to start with. So to get to configuration management, again, you can go to the configuration management application here, or if you like, you can use the type filter text. It's a habit that I use the type filter text. And it'll take you to the configuration management section. Now, I'm on a demo instance right now, and you'll see that there's a lot of stuff here to look at. So don't get overwhelmed. Um, a lot of these things are tied into discovery um, and are out-of-box CI types that are available. Most likely, your administrators will configure this down to fit your situation in your environment. Um, but a good starting point is actually at the bottom of this section in the base items uh, subgroup. So down here, you will see that we have uh, the ability to see all CIs. If you click that, you can get all CIs. And in this demo instance, there's a little over two, excuse me, almost 3,000 CIs in the instance. Or you can see things that are broken down by the higher level classes. So all of the servers, all of the computers, which are generally things like workstations. Um, workstations specifically, you'll note that uh, there's a slight difference in there. So there are things that can be computers that are not workstations. Um, some of that you'll, you'll learn as we go through this. Network gear, et cetera. So what I'm going to focus in on um, are the what I would consider the most common configuration items that you'd work with, which are, are computers and workstations. Or excuse me, our servers and workstations. So um, if you're logging a change against a server, um, this is the kind of information you might want to look up against uh, the CI to know uh, what state it's in or what its use is, etc. So I've clicked on servers and I've brought up the list of 40 servers that are available in the system. Um, and you can see there are all kind of various types of servers in here. Some are from Dell, some are from Microsoft, etc. So let me click on one of those. So what you see here is the core configuration item, a server configuration item form. Um, the information here provides you overview of the system um, and some of this information would come from discovery and it could be obvious uh, in your environment it might be tweaked out or in depending but some of the, the most important things to look at here obviously are name um, they're the company that it's assigned to if you have multiple companies in your system um, asset tags if you're using asset tags serial numbers manufacturer model and who it's assigned to now depending on your your company and how you use the system you may not use assigned to for servers some companies do some companies don't it's really depending on your use case um, one interesting thing to note here is the asset linkage so whether or not you are using asset management in your system the asset will get filled in anytime a CI a server CI at least gets created and I will cover asset management a little in a little more detail in a later episode but it's important to note that the reason that box is gray is because the system is responsible for maintaining Asset, uh, the asset creation and the assets uh, relationship to the CI. And it's based off of out of box the asset tag and the model ID. So you can see that there's a concatenation here of those. And if you want to see the details about the asset, again, you can hover or click into it. Now, again, I'm not covering asset management today, but just so you understand what that is. Beyond that, you have a uh, a set of information that's selected out of box that your organization may or may not use depending on what you value about servers and there can be functionality here to relate those servers to business services. Now I'll also cover that in another episode. So that is the overview of the base out of box server configuration. So let's look at the workstation configuration just to give you kind of a contrast. So it'll look very similar You'll just note here that we have things like who it's assigned to, which in our environments at least become very important so you know what this workstation is doing. You may have discovered information in here around disks and file systems and network adapters. You can see there's a lot more kind of out of box information here around the, the workstations. Now, one thing to keep in mind here that I don't know if I've covered in a previous episode is you'll note at the top that this one is still looking at computer. So it's important to note that the workstations here are all they are doing for is looking for a class of computer. So that's just a filter that they have here versus when you go to computers, it's looking at everything in the computer table. So 
a little bit of confusion there perhaps for some of you, but it's really using the class field to either include or exclude specific items into this view. Now again, hopefully your administrators will have this set up so you don't have to worry about that necessarily, um, but that's kind of the core workstation information. Similarly, you can go through and look at network gear and printers and, and the other devices that are in here. Obviously, it'll depend on what your organization is using them for. Um, this is the core way to get at configuration management. So some of the use cases that I'll touch on real quickly are mostly around incident and change. So let's go back to incident so you can kind of see this. So if I go in and I create a new incident, you'll note on the incident form that I get to choose or I can choose a configuration item. Now, this might be required in your organization. It might not be. It, depend, it depends on your processes. Um, I like the idea of having a configuration item become required because it always allows you to relate this incident, incident not only back to a person who opened it, but the, the specific device that this was caused by or affecting. And you can then relate it to things like business services and models. And you can start doing some metrics around um, things like common occurrences of problems and SLAs around specific uh, systems in your environment. It's, it's a very useful thing to do. So I'd, I would advise making that required if you, if you can for your organization. Um, again, here standard lookup things work, right? So if I just type in some letters there, it'll bring me uh, up a list of items. One thing, again, I don't know if I showed it in another episode was uh, in Calgary, you can use star star here, and that'll bring up a full list or at least at the top 15 on the list. So that can be useful if you have a short list of stuff. So let me just pick one of these here. I'll pick Annie IBM here, her computer. Um, and I think, again, I covered this in the incident episode, but I want to again mention it. From here, once you've picked the configuration item, you can begin to look up information about this configuration item. So I can click here and highlight and get some details about that. I can also drill in from here into Annie. I can do that from the incident as well. Let me go back. Um, whoop. Sorry, let me put that back in. Apologies. There we go. Um, I could also get that if this caller was Annie, but it's nice to be able to look at that related assigned user if that's helpful. So another thing that we've done in our environments is, depending on the configuration item, we may default some of the settings in this environment based on location or user, et cetera. So all very configurable things that, that your administrators can put in around the configuration item. So that's one core use for the configuration item. The other would be in change. And let me show you this because this is a little different. So you can see again the configuration item is listed here at the top of a change request. So let me put Annie's PC in there again. And you'll note one thing here, I think I covered it again, but I'll just mention it that there is a task that's affecting the CI. So as you're filling in the change request, the primary affected CI that you put here, it's going to tell you if there's something happening with this system, right? So what I'll do is I'll submit this, or I'll save it actually, so we stay here. And then I'll actually click on that to show you. It will bring up the related items that are using this CI that are currently still open. So you can see there's an incident out here for Annie's PC as well. So it's really good to understand what's going on with the system in the environment. Now that incident was the one I had opened previously, so uh, you can see that there. Um, another item that's important to note is, okay, so the, the, C, the CI that's at the top is the primary configuration item. In a change, you can have multiple configuration items. Um, you can have multiple impacted services. You can relate the change to many different CI artifacts that help you drive things like approvals or reviews or notifications. Uh, and to add those additional things on, you have to have submitted this. You have to have done the save or submit because that's the way the related lists get added on the bottom. And then you go in and you click edit to add the additionally affected CIs, right? So you can come in here and with the slush bucket, which is what this is called, you can highlight multiple things. Let's say we're doing patching on all of these IBM uh, workstations. I can add those on, save it, and those will then be added down in the affected CIs list. And again, this could drive an approval, it could drive a notification, it could drive a workflow, depending on what you're trying to do with this information. 
So those are some real high-level basics about configuration, uh, configuration management in the system. Uh, in later episodes, I intend to cover things like the business service relationship, delving a little bit into asset management, talking about some of the fields that aren't on the default form that are useful. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, this topic, please let me know. If you have any suggestions for things that you'd like to see in other videos, please let me know. If this was useful, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. Uh, I plan to try to keep putting videos, videos out as often as I can. Thanks for your time.